So, um, part three, um, it's Kevin. We'll have a look at um, bits I've done around um, flooring, ceiling, walls, etc. Um, just tell you the problems I came across. Uh, see if it's of any use to you if you try to do something similar. Okay. So as you can see, there's the extension. I've still not got around to putting the extra uh, panelling, uh, just covering up that bit. Um, and then this is actually aluminium uh, sheeting. There was a lot of debate about uh, what was the right thickness to make sure that this was pretty sturdy uh, to be able to walk on. Um, so essentially, the rear cross member goes across there there's a, a vertical bar uh, on the frame and there's also one that goes across here so the actual squares that are in free space are not that large um i went with um three mil and it's you know it's really rigid you can jump up and down it doesn't make any difference um it was impossible to get it in in one piece so i had to cut it up that is um, some of the bar that used to go along here that held the bottom of the, the thing in. Uh, I used a wire uh, brush on the grinder to take all the paint off and that screws in between the two plates holding it down. The whole point is that in about two years or so, um, I'm told the cross number may need changing. So I need to make sure that this is uh, something I can pick up uh, without too much fuss to get to the bolts which are here here and here uh, to help get that um, get that uh, cross member off um, James tells me that he can get it off I believe him and a lot of others have said you've got to lift the whole body off but he says no he's done lots of them on other Land Rovers and he had a look and said he could do it so we'll see in a couple of years time that'll be an interesting video um, to see whether that turned out to be true. So I looked at lots of different ways of getting these panels in and I didn't want tons and tons of rivets going all the way around the edge. I wanted something a bit cleaner and I found these. Um, this is one to go into a corner and you can see that it's, it's rounded off um, and there's just enough room to rivet through here with really small rivets and then that will trap one board here and one board under there um, and the one at the edge I got this and you can see now I took this measurement here to be the same uh, or a little bit more than the ply uh, coated sheeting but as you can see it comes in like that so it's a devil's own job to get it into here what I ended up doing was um, gently heating this with a heat gun and then allowing it to, when it was warmed and soft, just to open it out a bit. And that meant I could then put the uh, board in. And the other side of it was to use a, a really clean, so that if you um, slide it up, but a, but a scraper. So it's nice and broad and you could just lift it up and it would be a little bit of a slide to help get the board in, start at the one, and then a soft rubber mallet to so knock the back to help it go in with that that won't damage it whilst you're knocking it in so these are here the corner one not surprisingly uh, is in is in the corner here and then there's one over there um the back i'm having to i think probably uh, glue that in or maybe put a strip over the top to hold it in uh, that's why it's not on because I haven't quite figured out that one yet uh, using these again the trouble is there's nowhere to really fix this on except drilling into the actual steel frame which I'm trying to avoid as much as I can so that there's not peppered holes all over the place on it and uh, compromising its strength particularly on this side which has got the spare wheel hanging on it around the door is quite amusing uh, this one there's really nothing to fix it to. I should have let it come just a tiny bit longer and then I could fix it to the actual frame just on the inside. But I didn't and it's far too late to be taking it out. So I've got uh, some adhesive flex and sealant to go up behind there. 
Um, on here, um, it, on this door frame, if it's just at the outside edge, it's outside of the seal and everything, the door still closes, um, and then it's riveted towards the top. Some of the, the old um, down beam was still quite chunky, so I actually had to cut some off and fold it over. And then you can see the two different sorts of uh, this here and this here. Uh, and the other thing I would say is you need two scrapers because at various points there's the structural beam coming up to the frame of the door and it suddenly narrows down so you need one scraper in there to lift that off to get that in and then one just at that point to act as a, as a funnel to let the panel go in. So these are the original window surrounds and um, I sanded them uh, just to rough them up a bit and then used a smooth white hammerite. I didn't go for the gloss because I think uh, the slight dents and warps on it would show up much more and actually it looks pretty good um, next to the uh, white um, uh, coated um, Vellingham ply. Uh, I think it's three mil. Um, so um, it also helps to hold the, the panel on to the side and it doesn't really kind of move very much now. There's a little bit at the bottom but that's going to be taken up when I put the uh, furniture board coming up to it. Um, the two major um, uh, vertical beams are behind here um, and I've got photos uh, and I've actually marked up on the edge of the um, rail at the bottom where they are. Um, so the thing I found was that finding this hole for the um, um, desiccator to go in was a bit of a pain um, and I, the first one I did on the back door I used a, a Cora that was too big because that looked to be the same size as this hole but uh, used the smaller one that's the same size as the inner hole and then I'm going to use a small grinder to, to open it out so that the thing fits in. Now the reason why these have got screws in rather than rivets um, because I didn't number the plates around the side and I uh, didn't so that they don't necessarily go back to the window they came from. So when you drill um, these holes you sometimes find an old rivet hole, uh, a screw hole, and sometimes you don't. So the screw, these are big, quite big screws behind, they'll bite into the hole and go really well. Whereas um, on, on the, the other back door um, you can actually use rivets and um, once I started using the screws I thought it looked uh, better so I, I, I did it um, just with screws. I looked at various different methods of actually um, putting a ceiling in um, and what I settled on in the end was tongue and groove um, dyed uh, darker uh, to sort of match the um, furniture board so there's um, silent coat behind this, then that's a padded foil. These are, it, it is actually um, adhesive thermal wrap for hot water pipes, but it's to try and stop it being a thermal bridge um, uh, on the ceiling. And I've done the same here. Um, you can see it running along the frame uh, there too. Um, that's the same insulation um, over the top um, and uh, there's also obviously the, the uh, locker doors uh, underneath there um, giving more the only uh, insulation the only bit is, is sort of around the wheel arch here and there I just need to put a bit of insulation on the inside of that floor I think I'm going to put some um, thin ply just to make it flush here um, the air heat is going to go through there. I've already uh, looked around all over the place to try and find a good place for the um, the flute. It's going to go that way to go next to the exhaust, and the clean air is going to go that way. 
um, to keep the two separate um, and it's just outside the frame um, but well inside um, the wheel. So this is all the um, tongue grooving um, that I've measured out. There are various different lengths to deal with going around the window frames and some I've left long to cut when they go in. Um, the tip that I got, which I'm passing on, is stain it now. Don't stain it when it's in because it will contract and expand with the heat and uh, that will um, show off white bits if it contracts enough. The um, stuff after much turning around is this um, and it's actually for outside so I figured that would be good for um, the camper van in case it got damp from cooking and so on and that's going to get fixed to the wooden battens that I put up inside um, with a nail gun. So this is the front skylight or roof light. It's um, a Dometic um, midi hecky style um, and the the width of it is perfect for the slot um, that was there to start with. The width um, is not. This is where it, it stops. That's the original side of the escape hatch. So there's an additional piece of aluminium uh, sealed and riveted on between here and the other side. Now these are actually standard uh, roof stringers you know, for a domestic roof um, and they're the ax absolute perfect size to fit in to the frame and there's one on the side there and also to provide the other side to the rectangle and uh, that basically means fitting the thing is really really easy. The lip that was sticking up as part of the water uh, prevention uh, on the original skate patch I cut off. It wasn't possible to do it without it. And then these things, um, I put a clamp on here to keep it from popping over the edge, then put the screws in, then clamped it down and did that for each of them as it went on. It was really, really easy. And there's actually a surround with a fly screen and a, um, an outside screen. And there's a deeper one, which you need uh, for this because of the thickness of the wall. The one that comes as standard would sort of stop there. So it's got a bigger tongue on the inside to overlap. Um, and these are different for the thicker uh, walls. You, you order a set of those. Um, now the same uh, MIDI is, this is, this is the smaller version. And you'd think, that the fixation is exactly the same and it bloody well isn't. Uh, it's a completely different way of fixing them on. Again these are standard roof stringers um, and it's the perfect size but they're also um, treated so they, they shouldn't rot um, and I just cut a hole in the extension and it's I, I, it wasn't by accident, but it, it fits inside the, the square of the frame that was made. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they go on quite differently. Um, but they, they open, and make sure you get them around the right way. If you get them around the wrong way, they open facing forward. So if you accidentally leave it open a bit when you're driving along, you'll rip it off. So just make sure they're facing backwards. Um, but they're really good. You can lock them open just slightly. Um, there's a really good opening on them. They're really easy to open. Hello. <laughs> the missus is painting the house. Um, uh, and there you have it.